I mean, this is a huge deal because it does put America back at the top of supercomputing, supercomputing supremacy, if you will. So what you're seeing behind me here are just one of the rows, many here, full of computer banks. And what this supercomputer is going to end up doing is doing so many complex calculations that go from healthcare to everything else. We spoke to Ginny Rometty, the CEO of IBM, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, the chip maker behind this, and of course, Energy Secretary Rick Perry for an interview over what this means for American technology. Take a listen to what they told us earlier. This is nothing less than world changing, whether it's in the energy sector, whether it's in the cybersecurity sector, whether it's in the material sector, and importantly, I think, across the board, in the health sector. Yes. Now, Ginny, yes. if you were a defense contractor, you'd be prime yes. on this project. Yes. So what exactly is IBM contributing in the, in the whole process of technology here? What is it adding to this supercomputer? And how is IBM going to benefit as a company from it? Well, first, I'm very appreciative of the secretary and our ability to work on this project and very proud, but all of us are. So we not only were, as you call, the prime, we are the one that designed this. We have built this. We have brought in partners. And so this is really one of our greatest achievements. This is the fastest. It is the smartest supercomputer. So think of it as two in one. And so what Secretary... This is Watson's grandchild. This is, yeah, this is, that's right, Watson's grandchild. <laughs> uh, people usually talk about supercomputers as fast, but this is also when we say smart, think of the AI side. So this is two in one. It's a paradigm that we're able to do both. We were with the researchers earlier this morning. An experiment that might have taken 27 years to 13,000 years, they can do in a day. And so that unlocks, just as the Secretary said, you will have new compounds, new you know, cures for cancer. You'll look at new medicines. They're going to do research here on Alzheimer's. And so this, to me, is one of our proudest moments, for this to be in the world, the fastest and the smartest ever in this period of time, and four years to build. Now, Jensen, mm. the supercomputing concept really got accelerated with the addition of technology from companies like yours in the semiconductor space. So as we talk about the artificial intelligence applications and the, the other autonomous driving, everything else, all these buzzwords we throw out there, how is NVIDIA kind of defining artificial intelligence? And what exactly does this accomplishment here mean for the world of AI? Yeah, Summit is a new breed of computers. This is the beginning of a new trend of how computers are going to get built in the future. Uh, artificial intelligence, in a simple way, it, is a machine that can learn and it writes software that writes software by itself. And the software is so complex that no humans could possibly write it. And, and what's really exciting about, about the work that is done here is Oak Ridge was the world's first supercomputing center that took a risk on NVIDIA's GPU accelerated computing. This is ground zero. This new, new class of computers, this fusion of high performance computing, what, what Ginny said, fastest, as well as AI computing, which is smartest, this fusion of computers is going to be a new breed of computers. You, you know, Don, it, Jensen makes a very good point, I think, because collectively, four years ago, many of these things didn't exist. So four years ago, when we started our work, IBM had the processor not, process, uh, Power 9 processors, Jensen the GPUs, but we had to invent things as an example to take all this data in. We have the fastest ability to interconnect these things together. And think of it as the hose that brings all of the data in. Now, now Secretary, I mean, we've tossed around words like like fastest, most powerful, most complex. That implies that there is competition, and we know that there is. Yeah. And like the other big thing that's happening right now, this is about us versus China, the two biggest economies in the world and the two most arguably technologically superior out there. So what does the U.S. have to do with this kind of technology that positions us competitively against a, a country like China? How do we win, and what does it mean for Americans? American citizens want to see their tax dollars being spent appropriately. There's not a better example of that in a public-private partnership between the DOE and these two great private sector partners and then the product that we're getting here. This competition's real. It's not going away. The Chinese have the two fastest computers in the world. Uh, the Swiss are next, and I think the Japanese, and, and we're in fifth place. But with this opening today, we're going to move back up to the number one spot. But you can bet our friends in China are working very hard uh, to put themselves back in there. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.